Nick Van Hacker coming to you live from Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia, with my video on Doctor Who Series 5, Episode 12 and 15, The Pandora Opens, and the Big Bang. Alright, it is all too quick because there's a lot of details in a very little time. So, Vincent Van Gogh has a vision of the TARDIS exploding. He paints it onto a canvas, sends it, uh, it stays in his collection of mismatched paintings winds up in the collection of Winston Churchill during World War II. Winston Churchill sees it knows that it's an ominous prophecy and somehow, bending the walls of space and time, I don't know how, manages to call River Song in the 51st century while she's in prison. He tells her what she needs to do. She very quickly breaks out of prison and manages to get herself onto that London in the Sky deal from episode 2. She steals the painting from the personal collection of the Queen and lists the Queen's help because she knows the Queen knows the Doctor from past experience with him from episode 2. Gets herself a vortex manipulator and goes back to ancient Roman occupied England, Stonehenge, where the Pandora supposedly is. She uses something that looks like slightly psychic lipstick to make the soldiers believe that she's Cleopatra, get up and all, sends a message to the doctor to meet her there. She and he and Amy, Amy who right now is silently pondering the significance of the diamond ring, she thinks maybe he had asked someone to marry him, or had been married at one time and he swiftly dodges that saying no, but without actually telling her that the ring belongs to Rory. Aiden, put it in the fridge please. They, the soldiers are sent out by River Song to collect the doctor and Amy bring them to her tent where she shows him the painting. Amy remarks that uh, she used to love reading about ancient Rome when she was a child and she also used to love uh, stories of Pandora's box and she had books on them when, when she was a kid. The doctor thinks himself I don't believe this is a coincidence because coincidences don't exist, but he fobs it off for now for more important things like the tarts exploding and trying to figure out why and when. River Song tells him the Pandora is opening now and he needs to stop it. He thinks it's a fairy tale. She says, no, it's real and it's somewhere here. That's why I brought you here. When it opens, I think the TARDIS will explode. I don't know why. He remarked that the Pandora is a prison, supposedly some kind of cell that holds the most dangerous creature in the entire universe. They go to Stonehenge, where there is a disembodied piece of a Cyberman, I believe the arm, yes, an arm lying there on the ground that they don't see. They figure out that the Pandora is underneath Stonehenge, they open up a stairway, they go, which leads down underneath Stonehenge, and they find it. There is a disembodied head of a Cyberman there as well, they don't see at first. Uh, the doctor examines the box trying to figure out how to open it. He remarks that there are signals radiating off of it because it's an electronic piece of equipment. Obviously, the technology is advanced enough that alien races would probably pick up on it, which is true because River Song's little PDA thing she has starts picking up on about, oh, I don't know, 50 gazillion ships out in space hovering above Earth. Identifying them as Zygon, Silurian, Raxo, Corco, Falcatorian, aka the Slavine, Dalek, Cybermen, every race you can think of that's ever had a beef or wanted the Doctor dead is now hovering above Earth. She advised him to, to run. He says, No, I'm not going anywhere until this thing stays closed. Aiden, take that out. No, I want to He goes up, back up the stairs. And in a very nice vocal per performance, kudos to Matt Smith, uh, tells the aliens, who would you rather have opening it up first? You or me? They uh, agree and back off, giving him enough time to uh, open it up and examine it. River Song says she's going to take the TARDIS back in the past to try and figure out what the significance is of Amy being there. Because obviously there is, a, there is a significance to her being there that no one else sees. She takes it and it takes her back to June 26, 2010. The day of the finale of Season 5. 
she walks into Amy's house and sees all the little things that little Amy had scattered about. The little figures of the doctor that she made up after she met him and all of her books, including a book on ancient Rome and a book on Pandora's box. Everything starts snapping into place for River Song. Amy, meanwhile, while the doctor's downstairs trying to figure out the Pandora, Amy is upstairs talking to Rory because Rory is trying to convince her. Oh, did I mention Rory? Rory has returned. While they were down there, the Cyberman had came to life all out of the thing and tried to attack Amy. Rory saved her life, but she didn't recognize him because she didn't know who he was. So Amy and Roy are sitting up on the grass and he's trying to make her re remember who he who he is. Uh, apparently, according to River Song, the Romans are not real. They're automatons. Uh, a la Nesting Consciousness, first episode of Doctor Who. They're, they're automatons. Created by uh, I believe the Pandora are going to be perfect copies including Rory, and they're all designed to kill. Rory is trying his damnedest not to because, in his mind, he's still Rory. The Roman soldiers are still Roman soldiers. But he can't stop the programming embedded in him, and he shoots her. And she collapses in his arms, everybody thinking she's dead, which is the sort of way she kind of is. While that's going on, underneath with the Pandorican, all the aliens up there beam themselves down underneath Stonehenge, and, wow, oh my god, the best piece of drama I think I've ever seen. They have allied themselves together, formed a huge coup against the Doctor. They believe that he is the most dangerous creature in the entire universe. They have somehow find out through technology, prophecy, I don't know what, that the TARDIS is going to explode, and because he's the only one capable of flying it, whether or not he has it with him on his person, since he's the only one capable of flying it, that makes him the most dangerous person in the whole creation. And he must be contained. That the TARDIS will not explode because if the TARDIS explodes, as you see in Big Bang, time will cease to exist. The Pandora apparently was created as a prison designed specifically for him to contain him. They grab him up, drag him into it, and they seal it off. And that is where the first episode ends. When Big Bang opens up, apparently. Uh, the TARDIS has already begun its explosion, which has caused ripples through time, and time itself to start to cease to exist. All the creatures that were there, the Centurions, the Daleks, have kind of gotten disassociated with time to the point where they almost don't exist anymore. The fact that the Doctor, Amy, and Rory are still living is only because they're the last dying light. They're uh, anomalies in space-time, so it's taking them a little longer to fizzle out. And I'm going to stop here and come back with part three in just a minute.